Okay, um, let's start off. So I'm David, I'll be taking you for this webinar and welcome to the D Brown Consulting Talent Development Webinar. Our topic for today is, or for topic for the month, is micro learning. So micro learning is our topic for the month. And so we're going to be talking about that. Um, so micro learning, we're saying is a modern learner's performance support tool. So that's micro learning. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And you guys can please feel free to type into the chat and let's discuss on the chat and everything so that we can interact. I like this to be as interactive as possible. All right. So let's move on. So a little bit about us. We are D Brown Consulting. We do training, consulting, and payroll training as our core service, which we offer to, uh, we say we're the analyst hub. So anything analysts need, financial modeling, anything an analyst needs, a data analyst, a financial analyst, a reporting analyst, a sales analyst, a HR analyst, every single role has some analysis task or the other. There's no role that doesn't have an analysis task. So that we concentrate on that analysis task and show you how best to do the analysis and reporting. So that's what we do, consulting. We also do that analysis and we, are, we build solutions, reporting solutions for clients. For payroll, we have an online payroll platform that guarantees confidentiality. I'm sure you know about the bickering. Some people will be talking about someone else's pay that they saw. I mean, that can never happen with our application because we eliminate the leakages which we know exist in most organizations. So that's what we do. All right, so here, let me just move on. We have affiliations with the three major organizations, Financial Modeling Institute, where they are as a Canadian-based worldwide institution for financial modeling, which they have three certifications. Uh, level one is Advanced Financial Modeler, level two is Chartered Financial Modeler, and level three is Master Financial Modeler. I think is one of the most important certifications or newer certifications out there. It really proves to you, if you are recruiting and you want to be sure that you're recruiting a finance person that's up to speed and knows his onions, he, you need to, he needs to be able to build models and use models to explain certain things in the business and advise management. And to prove you build models, it's very difficult to know someone that really builds a model. You see a CV and say, yes, I am a modeler. But if you have the Advanced Financial Modeler Certification, you definitely know how to build models because you'll be building a model in the exam. So that's a very key certification we'd like to promote. And the nice thing is the exams are now available in Nigeria. So that's a very cool uh, positive. So people can write the exam now in Nigeria. So that's cool. All right. And then Microsoft, we are also partners to Microsoft. And then we also uh, partners to ATD, or we have members that are members of Association for Talented Development. Great. So what is our courses? We have courses, as I said, analyst courses, financial modeling, uh, business intelligence, Excel for business, Office 365, and financial modeling and the rest. So I want to just quickly jump to our topic for today. Uh, we, here we're going to look through a descript, or we're basically going to describe the typical characteristics of any microfinance course, identify the three major reasons why learners are disengaged, and we recall the four reasons why the modern worker needs micro learning, and then we talk about applying a six step approach to instructional design for micro learning. So, this is what we're going to cover quite a bit, quite a lot. Uh, uh, and um, I would like you guys to engage, be very, uh, type various questions out, anything you want to know, let's know, type it out so that it can, um, we can all work together, or at least learn together, yeah, so to say. All right, so any, any questions? Let me wait for any questions. Now, if you want to speak, you can always just type in the chat and then there's a button which you request, like a hand tool. Once you click on that hand tool, it means you want to talk, uh, just like in a classroom, right? Put your hands up and then you, you could talk, all right? So talk at any time. Great. So let's uh, move on. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can reduce this. 
Okay, great. Sorry, just some technical, some small technical stuff I was doing. So what is micro learning? Let me ask you guys a question. What do you think micro learning is? Right? Let me let me see if we can ask you a question. Or do you currently do micro learning? So how many of us currently develop micro learning courses? Let me just ask, ask that. How many of us develop micro learning? So you have a you have a poll right there on your screen. So can you just click and answer how many of us develop micro learning courses? Oh, this is a very experienced group. 50-50, call a friend, 50-50, okay. So 50-50, 50% of us um, say yes, 50% of us say no. All right, so 50-50, well, that's good. That's good enough. That means we'll be able to have some good uh, discussions then. So, all right, let's get back to the slides. Let me get back to the chat, see how the chat is going. So, right, I have this quote from Winston Churchill. He says, I'm always ready to learn, although I do not always like being taught. <laughs> so, that's our modern learner, right? Always ready to learn, but they don't really like being taught. And micro learning, simple definition is micro learning is learning in small steps is basically bite-sized learning so you're learning in bite sizes in chunks that's how you learn in chunks so learning is short-term digestible and easy easily manageable and that is really how human beings learn so if you think about it when you're at work and you want to quickly find a solution to one very small problem you have when maybe you're working on word or working somewhere you go online and where's the place you go to most of us go to YouTube. YouTube is one of the most important micro learning sites out there. There are probably 1.2 billion people in the world that use YouTube, and it has so many videos. But the key thing about you, the thing about YouTube is it is not what we call curated content. So it's not contents that someone has sat down to break, uh, kind of bring all the correct, or has, has someone verify that it's correct. I'm sure you've heard a lot about fake news, fake news. So. Curated content is different from YouTube. YouTube content is excellent. I mean, and if you find an excellent channel, uh, recommend ours, for example, you see content that is already curated and, and free. Um, so we're going to look through and understand how we take this micro learning thing and make it practical for our businesses. So why do we need micro learning? Yeah, why do we need micro learning? As you see, I've done a technique here where um, you are basically reading it as it's coming out one at a time. A critical analysis of your client, the modern learner, will give you the answer to why we need micro learning. So who is the modern learner? Who is that person that I'm calling the modern learner? Who is he? So let's have a look at who the modern learner is. I'm, I'm showing you now a, a slide of the modern learner. Now this was, uh, the source of this is by Deloitte. I think um, Deloitte kind of put this together. And this gives you an idea of who the modern learner is. So this modern learner, there's so much going on in this slide, for example. This is, uh, I mean, when you look at it, you see too many things happening at the same time. But I'm gonna use this slide to do the most of the talk that, uh, most of the talk around micro learning, right? So I'm gonna use this slide. So. Let me focus, make you focus on one thing first. So you're focusing on the 1% in the middle. 1% of typical work week, right, is all that employees have to focus on training and development, just 1%. So that's the only time that they have to really focus on learning. I don't know if that sounds uh, strange. Does that sound strange to you? Can I see people commenting and any comments? No one's typing in the comments. Comments are too quiet. Yeah, what do you think? How much time, how much of your time do you spend? Or well, how much of your time do you have, not even spend, to, to focus on training and development? What percentage of your own time currently? Just type, type in the chat, type in the chat, what percentage of your time is spent on, um, talent development. I know 
well, in the office. So I know personally I spend a whole lot of time developing myself, but you tell me how, may, how much of your own time is spent on talent development. Have a very quiet audience, okay. Let me focus on something else again in this, um, the Modern Learner uh, infographic by Bersin, I mean by De Deloitte. So I'll focus on the other part of the top right there called untethering or untethered. So untethered, what do we mean by untethered? That the modern learner is untethered. So the modern learner is untethered. Here we have some statistics. 37% of the global workforce is expected to be mobile. Now this, this, this data was done quite a while ago in 2015, but they're expected to be mobile by 2015. Now I think that in, in Nigeria, especially in Africa, most people are already mobile. I mean, Nigeria has one of the highest internet penetrations in the world. Internet penetration in the world is, is amazing. And 90% of the people who use their mobile phones to go online. 90%. So even in, in Nigeria, it's mostly mobile. People are more mobile. Yeah, 30% of time employees do most of their work somewhere other than uh, the em employer location. 30% of the time, people are doing work somewhere else, not really the employee, employer's location. Now, that means they're untethered. They're not connected to the office. They're untethered from the office, right? I think that percentage is going to grow. So many people are working from home now, and the technology, okay, right now I'm training, or I'm doing a training using a, a, an online platform, and anybody could be anywhere in the world. I could be doing this for a 1,000 people all over the world, and it's the same, uh, same thing. I don't need to be there physically to train in a classroom. Right. So, and then also the next one there is 20%. What's 20% mean? 20% of workforce comprised of temps, contractors, and freelancers. So this is the today reality of the modern learner. Yeah, with all, what happens with all of this that I'm going to share, all these things kind of lead to the only training that will be effective for this modern learner is micro learning that's where we're heading so let me take another focus let's look at the on demand side what do we mean by on demand right so have a look at this visual i'll just give you a few seconds to have a look at it so is this true of you that employees are assessing information and learning different, differently that they did not just if, that they did uh, than just a few years ago. Everything is quite a bit, quite different than what they used to learn a few years ago. Yeah, is that true or false for you? I think it's true for me. Let me type into the chat to encourage you guys to chat. I think is on demand. I need things quick. I need things done. I need things now. On demand, on demand. I mean, our phones, we we are on our phones every single day. I sent a tweet uh, just the other day. I said, how many of us are addicted? I said, are you addicted? So my Twitter handle is uh, D Brown Analyst. I said, most of us are addicts and we don't know it. Because when you wake up in the morning, let's assume you're married or you have or your significant other, you wake up in the morning, is the first thing you do saying hello to your significant other, or the first thing you do is take your phone and look at your phone. Can you answer in the chat? The first thing you do is look at your phone or you say hello to your significant other. Well, me, I, I probably take my phone, which is really bad. So what just that tells you is that you're addicted to your phone and your phone is almost like a drug. So your phone is a, almost like a drug because you think you need things on demand. You need to know what's happening every single time. You leave office, you're not, you haven't left office, you're still on your phone. Uh, so it's an addiction, but that is the modern learner. It seems the phone attention spans are very low. Uh, people are increasingly turning to their smartphones every single time. Yeah, so that's what we're saying here. And it's true. It's nearly true all over the world, it's not just uh, the U.S. or everywhere. Another key uh, aspect 
of the modern learner is collaboration. So what do we mean here? There's some few statistics here. I'd like you to have a look at this. All of this statistics tie to the fact that the modern learner is very different from who he used to be a long, uh, quite a while ago. And because the modern learner is different, we need to change the way we train them. L and D needs to change. Learning and development needs to change to accommodate for the modern learner. And even millennials, millennials are the real modern learner. And I'll advise you go online and look for a video by Simon Sinek about how he explains the millennials and how millennials in the workforce should be treated and how millennials in the workforce or millennials find it so difficult adjusting to the workforce. It's, it's quite an interesting, insightful uh, discussion. So here we're saying collaboration. 80% of workforce um, learning happens via on-the-job interactions with peers, teammates, and managers. So 80% is really on the job. So you can imagine on the job, you're asking on the job, you always ask a question to the person to your left or the person to your right, please can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Now, if you had a training system where the can you help me with this is actually one two minute video, you easy to access, you go to your portal or in your office, type in the question, you easily access that uh, template or that process and you're done and you just move on with your work. That is micro learning. And that is so, so important to improve people's performance in any office. Yeah. So you have that collaborative uh, spirit and most of us obviously have Facebook accounts and all the social media. Now, the last part there is empowered. Empowered. So how can you empower your workforce? So do they have opportunities to learn? Do they, can they choose their own course? Or does the management say, hey, this is what you're learning and that's it? How empowered are they? The modern worker wants to be empowered, needs to be empowered, yeah? Here they say 62% of IT professionals who re report having paid for their own training, 62%. So IT professionals don't get enough training in their office. They pay for their own training and they come back to the office and use it. So that's a big staggering statistic. So what about you? How much training do you pay for? I know quite a couple of people that have come to us for one of our courses and said they actually paid themselves. They asked their, their employer for vacation to come and do a training. And that training was going to affect their work. That training was going to help them in their work. So the employer should have at least said, okay, do you know what, go for this training. It's good you're paying for yourself, but we'll, we'll give you those uh, vacation days so you don't use your vacation days for training that you need to do your work properly. So things are changing, and the modern learner and the modern L&D um, professional needs to know how to improve uh, performance based on using these tools and these ideas in microlearning. The modern learner is constantly distracted. Currently, right now, I'm probably sure that you have various tabs open and stuff, and you're looking at different tabs at different times, and you're distracted. But that's what the modern learner is usually, constantly distracted. And that's one of the aspects too. Distraction is another key trait of the modern learner. Yeah, let me blow this up for you. So number of times online every day, Early, uh, you have five five days. What, the, what does that mean? So these are the number of times you're on the internet every day. Yeah. So it's 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 like prior to prior to this. I mean, they're on the internet like five times every day, and then now it's twenty seven times every day. If maybe you check 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 things. It's it sounds so ridiculous, but if you think about it, it's true, true, but uh, sad and true, right? So, so anyway, that's that's it. Early days of the internet, five days. So you think about your kids, so the millennials, they probably are on the internet 90 times a day. Every single time you, you check your phone, you're on the internet, check your phone, you're on the net, check your phone, you're on the internet. So it's, it's addictive, but it's something that you need to think about, yeah? Another thing about distraction, knowledge workers are constantly distracted with millions of website apps and video clips. Distraction, always distracted. 
Another distraction statistic, five minutes. What are we saying here? Five worker or workers now get interrupted as frequently as every five minutes. Now, the issue is this, if you want to focus and do some, do some work in your office, you need, you need a, a, a chunk of time, at least like 20 minutes of solid focus for you to do proper work. But if you keep getting distracted every five minutes, then you end up doing absolutely nothing or very, very little work. So the effective work you probably do in a day, instead of eight hour day, you do effective work for like, what, two hours if you're lucky. And that's why people stay late in the office because then there are less distractions in the evening and then you're able to do more work. So sometimes people come very early in the to work, maybe six o'clock, do a, a big chunk of their work very early. And then when people come in, start distracting, hey, how are you doing? This is that, blah, blah, blah. So the work culture, the office environment needs to also, there's so much distraction going on. And that's just unfortunately what the modern worker has to scale through. Another distraction story is nine. What, does, what do we mean? What number? Nine, what do we mean there? People unlock their smartphones up to nine times every hour. Now, be honest. During this small time of this webinar, how many times have you checked your smartphone? Be honest and type in the chat. How many times? Honestly, even me that's actually doing the webinar itself, I think I've checked my phone like three times already. I've done, I've done, I checked my phone like three times. That's, that's really bad. But how many times have you checked your phone while doing this webinar? Oh, it's only Clarice that's being honest here. Nobody else wants to out themselves. Hmm? Okay. So you are probably even more distracted. Should I assume that? No? Okay. All right. So that's distraction. The modern learner is constantly overwhelmed. Constantly overwhelmed. That's another trait of the modern learner. Another number that comes there is 41. What do we mean here? Constantly overwhelmed. Yeah. 41% of time workers spent on, uh, or for one percent of times workers spend on things that are, that offer little personal satisfaction and do not help them get work done. Hmm. Interesting. 41%. Huh. But that, that's, that's sad. I hope not. I don't spend up to that, but this is the average, really. This is based on real statistics, uh, right? 41% of time workers uh, spend on things that often that offer little personal satisfaction and do not help them get their work done. So this is part of the distraction. So as I said, that five minute distraction, every five minutes you get distracted. So I'm saying 41% of your day is really wasted because of distractions. Another statistic about being overwhelmed is two thirds of knowledge workers actually complain that they don't have time to do their jobs. Obviously, with all those other statistics, it's true. Two thirds of them, they just don't have time to do their jobs. So focus, and it, it takes a lot of discipline though, but over, uh, you're overwhelmed by all sorts. Another key attribute of the modern learner is impatience. Modern learner is pretty impatient. And so a few statistics come to mind from this, um, uh, infographic. So, if you want to grab somebody's attention in your uh, website or, or stuff like that, you only have, unfortunately, five seconds to do it. So, you have, or let's say, between five to ten seconds. If you don't grab their attention, they basically go somewhere else. So, you go to a website, you don't see something interesting, you move to the next website. So, you have very short attention span and you need to grab people's attention with very visu interesting looking visuals. So for example, the visuals I'm showing here, the reason I'm grabbing your attention to the center because you um, and we can see that the background has been faded out and I want to grab your attention so I put something right there in the center. You need to put all sorts of different techniques, uh, best practice techniques for you to be able to um, show your visuals, especially when you're using slides properly and effectively. So another key statistic of impatience is four minutes. What are we saying here? Most learners won't watch video longer than that. This is statistically proven. In fact, when 
uh, when YouTube uh, do the analysis for um, what videos are going to be top rated, they have certain algorithms they use and they know on average how much time people spend on the video. And if people don't spend a certain percentage of time on your video, it will not be counted as, as watched. It will not be counted as, you know how uh, you see how many people viewed your video. It won't be counted by Google. So four minutes, that's the attention span. So if that's the attention span, four minutes, just take note of that. Before we go through the next section, which is six steps to design and micro learning, I'm going to play a very short video for you. So a very short video that explains micro learning, just a one minute video. So I want you to watch this and we're going to have a small discussion after you watch the video. So let's play, let me just quickly, that's coming up on your screen in a few seconds. When it comes to learning at work, we all want to be great at what we do. But becoming a top performer isn't something that happens all at once. Real improvement is only possible a little bit at a time. That's why microlearning is the most effective approach to workplace training. Microlearning provides short bursts of information that can be applied right away, helping people build the skills they need to be successful at their jobs. Think of these bite-sized pieces of learning like sentences. Each conveys just one complete thought, but when you put a few of them together, you build a more complex idea. Each microlearning moment is made up of a digestible morsel of information combined with a short practice exercise. It's hyper-specific so you can get the right help right when you need it. Like when composing an email, working with new spreadsheet software, or practicing a big speech. Bit by bit, these microlearning moments add up to better job performance today and continual improvement going forward. Microlearning isn't just breaking up content into smaller pieces. It's a way to make learning digestible and effective, transforming not just what you know, but what you actually do every day. Great, so those, uh, that's microlearning, we're back. What did you gain from that? What, what did you understand about what micro-learning really is? Hello? Yeah, so I'd like us to type that in the chat. What exact, what did you gain? What's the main thing you gained from that? And what, what do you now understand? Or do you understand micro-learning a little bit more? So just type something in the chat. <laughs> like see if I'm, uh, maybe you type this before you put your smartphone away, but it distracts you a lot. You need to switch off your phone sometimes. You just need to switch it off. You don't need to answer everybody all the time. Just switch it off. But it's too it's addictive. It's what is a dopamine charge. You get dopamine. Dopamine is like a drug. Really, when you people it makes you happy you see a text message you see a response to your to <laughs> to something you've posted it, it's it's dopamine that's what it is so micro learning let me show you one or two things we have um when you want to use micro learning the setting steps so we've created an e-learning platform for example and one of our rules in our e-learning platform is that no video should be more than five minutes. But really, we just use that as a rule, a general rule. So as much as possible, we never allow a video in our e-learning platform to be more than five minutes. So all our courses and everything, you watch five minutes and the five minutes gives you an entire, it, it gives you, um, teaches you an entire concept from beginning to end. So you can watch that five minutes and you're okay, you've learned something. You don't need to continue watching, although you'll be encouraged to continue watching to kind of learn more, but it can stand on its own, that tiny five minute chunk. So my question to you is this, how many minutes do you consider as micro learning? How many minutes, let's assume it's video, right? How many minutes of content or video would you consider uh, to be micro learning? 
So let me let me send you give you a poll. Let's see. I'll ask you that question right now. So can you answer the question on the poll and let's let's discuss. Okay, great. I can see that people have finished voting. Four to six minutes seems to have won, right? Four to six minutes. One to three minutes, 25% of us think. Six, six to 10 minutes, another 25. And then four to six, 50%. I, I think I agree, four to six. But then you have to think about this. If you know um, TED Talks, TED Talks are 18 minutes. If you check all your TED Talks, uh, the most, on average, they should be 18 minutes, TED Talks. So TED Talks, how many of you... Um, uh, listen to TED Talks. I'm sure quite a lot of us here do, right? Let me just end this poll. And TED Talks is one. There's something else, um, one other presentation format called Pechakcha. Let me write, type that down for you. Pecha. In fact, in our office, we've, we've started doing uh, Pechakcha weeks every Every Thursday in our office, we have someone that's presenting on Pechakcha. I don't know who presented today. I was in the office. That would be so interesting. So concept, you learn something and you want to present on something. You need to present 20 slides in 20 seconds each slide. 20, 20. So 20 slides, 20 seconds each slide, and the slides should automatically be rolling. You shouldn't click. You should put the slides on auto run. So your slides are running regardless of you. So every 20 seconds, next slide, 20 seconds, next slide, 20 seconds, next slide. So you are forced to know your content in detail and you are forced to reduce it into 20 seconds with one concept. So what you advise to do really is each slide just talks about one thing. And because each slide talks about one thing, you should remove text. You shouldn't put text all over your slide. You should just put a picture with maybe very, 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 very minimal text. And that picture basically depicts what it is you're saying. So when you're presenting, the slide is behind you with the picture and everybody's listening to you or watching you talk about that concept, right? So it, I think it's a wonderful way of presenting. It really is, really wonderful way of presenting. So let's look through and let's say the um, six steps to design a micro learning course. Let me go through what I think are the six steps to design a micro learning course. So step one is you need to determine your learning objectives. That's step one. So six steps to designing, you need to determine what it is your, your learning objectives. What are your learning objectives? This is so critical. So when you're designing a course, you, you ask yourself, okay, well, my learning objective is uh, let's think I'm designing a financial modeling course. My learning objective is to produce or the, at the end of this course, what you, how you write your learning objectives, you say at the end of this course, you should be able to, and then you now write your learning objectives under that. So you should be able to document the process for employing a new staff something like that, maybe for HR. Or you should be able to um, walk through the steps for putting on, I don't know, the generator. <laughs> so the key thing there is, is an action word. Your learning objectives have to have something that you can measure. It has to be measurable. Yeah, it has to be smart, right? So it has to be measurable. And because once your learning objective is measurable, then you'll be able to actually calculate and see, did this learning happen at the end of the day? Did the learning happen or not? And if you can calculate or see or confirm whether the learning happened or not because you've written very clear learning objectives, then you can calculate return on investment. Then you can calculate impact. How impactful has this learning been? So determining your learning objectives is very key if you want to... Um, design micro learning course. The second um, important step is to choose an appropriate design method. So choose an appropriate design method. In choosing an appropriate design method, let me show you how we do our courses online. Maybe I'll use that as a sample. So let me just put that up for you now. And just change this up.
So here, I was saying choose, um, I said choose an appropriate, um, the step was choose an appropriate design method. So if we come to um, one of our online courses, let's just go to one of our online courses. So this is our online e-learning platform. And what we, the methodology we've used for the e-learning platform is micro learning. And micro learning using the video, video as our design media. So our design method is video. And if you look at it, let's pick a course. Like this one is Learn Excel Essentials for Reporting uh, for free. This is a free course. In fact, if you guys are interested in, in this, let me just give you the link on the chat. So you can actually get these free courses. We have some free courses there for you to enjoy. So I'm going to click on this course and I'll show you how we went through that process of designing it. So we, we started off by writing a learning objectives, right? Which was the first step. Then in choosing the appropriate design method, so we we thought, okay, video is really what we're going to use. We're going to use video, but then we're going to use five five minute bursts. So our videos are going to be in five minute bursts. So here is like the instructional design. Welcome to the course and stuff like that. Each of these videos, let me say how Excel works, for example. Let me go there. I don't know if it's going to open up. Let's see. I hope I've logged in properly. Just want to show you. Okay. So if I play this, I don't know if you can hear it, but but that's not the point. So you can see here you have you have designed this content, designed this course. You have each video. Everything everything is in chunks. Now, the media is not only video. This is video, right? This is a video. You watch the video. You also can download. So click on this is actual download for you to practice. So you click on this to practice what it is you want to learn. And then here, this one here to the left here is text. So this is just simple text, you know, simple text that you know, someone can read. So there are three media here is text. There's some downloads of some material or pre-work you need to do. And then there's a video. And then, of course, there's also a quiz. So you have a quiz, this is also all the design, uh, choosing the appropriate design methods. So apart from the videos, we also have a discuss forum. So look at this discuss forum, because someone has asked a question here. You can see that the discuss forum for the learner, the learner also wants to be able to um, ask questions very quickly, ask quick questions and requires uh, quick answers, isn't it? So that's your discussion board here. This person is saying, I'm unable to view the last video, uh, two videos how Excel works, the managing dates, blah, blah, blah. And then you can see the response by the trainer. See the response by the trainer. So people can discuss directly in, instantly. You know, one of those things is people are distracted. They need they need information immediately. So all of that should be in one platform. You'll be able to discuss with the trainer in the same platform, able to watch the videos, able to download the materials, you're able to do a quiz. Quiz, again, is important. So you can see a quiz here. Uh, uh, complete this statement. If it is not in Dash, it is not Excel. Let me click that. Did I get that? I say next. Let's check whether I got it. Okay, one is correct. One is incorrect. Um, yeah, so you can see that's it. And then at the end of the day, this platform, you can now give somebody a uh, and say, okay, if you finish everything, you get a certificate or some, something like that. So when you design, that was step two, choose an appropriate design method because the design method will inform the other steps. So let's quickly get, let's get back to our steps. So I'm just shifting to back to our slides. All right, so what's our next uh, step? So our next step is to conduct a content audit. Conduct a content audit. So why do you need to conduct a content audit? You need to understand what content needs to be removed. You don't, you don't teach everything because you are the subject matter expert most of the time, and that's, a, that's actually... A negative to be a subject matter expert and a facilitator. The issue is you have so much in your head, you have so much you want to give, 
and you start giving everything. You start giving everybody all the information that they don't really need everything. They just need a little. So being a subject matter expert is is a, is a is a limiter sometimes. You have to pretend you're not and then ask yourself, what exactly does the learner need? What is that simple information the learner needs? Not what I want to give this learner. I just He needs to learn offset. He needs to learn this. He needs to learn that. Mm, not really. He just needs to learn what he needs for that particular task at hand. So you need to conduct a content audit and remove the content audit is to remove, is a removal audit, to remove a lot of content that you really the learner doesn't need. That's step three. Step four is to think in terms of working memory. People have very limited working memory. The thing is, you have um, thing, you have this instance thing. When it comes to memory, there's some things that you know on in a flash. Yeah, it's, it's more like automated memory, really. It's, you know it in a flash. And then there's some things that it takes a while for you to gather and understand. And then there's some things that go back into, um, how I call it, storage. It goes to the, the back end of your memory that you can always call back. You permanently know it. You permanently know how to ride a bicycle. I mean, give you a bicycle now, even though you haven't ridden in 20 years, you can ride it. But when you do learning, you need it to... Be in people's working memory. They can always access it at any time. And if you give bite sizes, it's easier for them to digest. They, they, don't, uh, they don't need too much information. Yeah, you could, you could add the extra information into maybe a booklet that they can read after. But for the actual training itself, try not to bombard your audience with too much information. So next thing, next step, step five, choose a format plan and develop your course. So we chose a format, we chose video, we chose text, we chose uh, quizzes, we chose um, quite a few things, even sometimes audio. We chose different media and then we said, okay, this is how we're gonna develop or de deliver this course. And we have certain rules and in the planning process and the development process, we're like, okay, this video we've just recorded is like eight minutes, how do we cut it? How do we reduce it? How do we do what? Our system audit. How do you do that system audit to reduce the content? A system audit is very key. You don't just do this as one step. You do this throughout the process, conducting a content audit, not system audit, sorry, content audit. So conducting a content audit, you do it throughout the process, and then you now choose your format as step five, plan and develop your course. Once you finish planning and developing your course, of course, you need to organize the lessons and content in chunks. And if you remember the uh, lessons I showed you, they're all broken down into chunks, chunks of less than five minutes. So chunks of less than five. If you have one that's 10 minutes, then think about breaking it down into two videos. Edit it in a way that clearly breaks it down into two videos and makes sense to the uh, audience, right? So that's very key. What I'll do now is I'll give you another example. I'm going to play you a very short video of another example of how you implement small micro learning. So just watch uh, this video that's coming up in a few seconds. So it's a micro learning example, uh, some TED Talk that happened and it's Khan Academy's, uh, from Khan Academy TED Talk. Micro learning examples. Now that you have some familiarity with the concept of micro learning, let's give some examples. Recently, Northwestern University decided they wanted to teach high school students and teachers in STEM how to talk about information that many deemed to be too technical. They created a microlearning course called Principles of STEM Education that could easily be taken in any classroom. The course consisted of a series of short modules that broke down complex information. Each of these sections is broken down into the why section that explains the reason and the how section that gives context, a video, and a PDF outlining additional tips. Another example of microlearning is what is known as microlecture. Almost everyone is familiar with this type of microlearning, TED Talks. A popular nonprofit devoted to spreading ideas, TED Talks are limited to 18 minutes and focus on one single idea. Several other examples of microlearning include TEDx, a local version of TED Talks, Khan Academy, which offers free online courses, and Linda, which teaches a variety of skills. 
Some apps that engage in microlearning include Gyro, which offers content to help enhance your well-being, Audible, which streams audiobooks and other texts, Twitter, where you can tweet, Duolingo, which uses microlearning to teach foreign languages, Chegg, which allows users to create flashcards, and Learn, which takes a micro approach to learning programming. Mini games, also known as casual or micro games, are an example of immersive microlearning simulations that last between 5 and 20 minutes. They are especially useful to help employees learn skills that are best taught through repetition. Mini games are highly engaging because they have quick sprints of engaging content and are easy to consume. Mobile devices are the perfect interface for mini games because that type of content works well on a small screen. Here are some additional examples of micro learning that may surprise you. One to two question quizzes or polls, infographics, activity notifications from online communities of practice, RSS feeds, flashcard pushes, challenge type interactivities, brief games, microblogging exercises, brief videos, including interactive videos, single question case studies, question and responses, and learner recordings of a brief audio or video response to a question. A special thanks to all these sources which helped me create this great video for you. Please watch the next video, Microlearning, why it's gaining popularity. All right, so that was great. I um, hope you learned a few things. hope you learned a few things there. So microlearning, as microlearning is the way to learn for the modern learner. It is the way to learn the modern learner. That's how the modern learner, that's how human beings really work. That's how human beings really learn. Now, schools, all our Victorian way of teaching, which you go to primary school, secondary school, the university, and then you come back and start work, and then we now start retraining you. All the retraining you do at work, hopefully they should have done it in school. Seems that our schooling system is training people not for work. And really, that's one key thing that most nations need to develop. They need to find a way of changing the way they learn, changing the way they teach their learners, because it's not good enough for the modern workforce. And one key, one website you just heard about it there is Khan Academy. If you can go to Khan Academy, you will see so much content, so, so, so much content. In fact, let me just share my screen one last time and you'll see uh, all the content we're talking about. It's, it's, it's a lot of content out there and it's just for you to know which is the best that you could use to really learn a lot. Let me show you some. All right, so I'm sharing my screen. I want to go to Khan Academy. Khan Academy. So I'm just going to a website, Khan Academy. I advise you do. It's a free a site that has micro learning videos on nearly everything you ever need to learn and anything your kids need to learn. It's an excellent, excellent site and it's free, absolutely free. You can log in as a parent. You click on parent, log in as a parent, and then Get, get create a login for your kid or your child or whoever, and you can set various courses for the, your kid to do. They watch the video and they do the exercises, and the exercises learn from how they are, whether they're getting it right or not getting it right. So if you're, it's like a lesson teacher. It's like an online lesson teacher for free, and there's so much content for you as an adult as well, and it's all absolutely free. So this is like this is the modern school. I just take Khan Academy as the modern school. And for us adults, another place you could go get some learning, they may not be micro learning, is um, uh, advise uh, Coursera, Coursera.com. But that's not really micro learning. They don't design it like micro learning, but it's still learning. But the way Khan Academy works is mostly like micro learning. And the way, the way we also uh, teach is, is micro learning as well. So. Uh, you, you just I encourage you to go online and check these things out, right? So any questions for me? Um, if you could have questions for me, we've actually come to the end of the micro learning, um, web, micro learning webinar. And it's just a topic that I think your learning and development professionals and your uh, human resource professionals should talk to vendors and training vendors and say, look, you need to break things down into chunks. Instead of us doing that five-day course, why don't we do a five-month course? 
and give tiny, tiny, tiny content throughout those five months, and people will actually learn and use the content far more, and you get a better return on investment. I think that's the way to go, really, for the profession. So what do you think? I want you to try out that pechacha. Try the check check out the pe, pechak. Is it pechakucha? Is it pecha, pechakcha? And see how that works, because I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, let me see if I can type it out. Maybe it should come out. Pecha. This is like micro learning on steroids, because you need to know your stuff. And when you're presenting it, you're presenting 20 slides in 20 seconds. Okay, Pechakcha. Twenty. If I call it 2020. So that's, you should check Pechakcha out as well. The art of concise presentations. Wow, so that's cool. I haven't been, so 20 images, 20 seconds. So check these out. This is micro learning, but the person that's actually doing the teaching needs to do a lot of learning to be able to now teach in this 2020 format. But this is what I advise you to do in your organizations. If you're having presentations, tell them to follow the 2020 format, 2020 Pechakcha format. So I'm glad that everybody enjoyed the webinar. If you can go to our website and go to Office Training Hub, let me give you a quick offer. There's a book that I wrote with uh, 15 other authors, and the book is on destination. It's called Destination Facilitation, and it's um, it's a book about facilitation around the world, how we use various cultures around the world to facilitate uh, facilitate different topics. So let me put that out for you. I'll just publish that. So if you look at it, so Donna Steffi edited it. Donna Steffi is a master trainer, and we she was our trainer in our master trainer program that I did four years ago. And we about 15 of us wrote various chapters. So we, uh, we wrote um, uh, the chapter, I wrote the chapter on Africa. So um, how are various cultures, uh, how do various cultures in Africa affect the way people learn and the way people teach? So you, the facilitator, if you're teaching someone from, from northern Nigeria, teaching someone from Senegal, and teaching someone from South Africa, what are the cultures you can bring to the classroom to make them even learn better, faster, and kind of build that interaction and build that connection? So, so that's the book. So you could always order it. It's very cool. Yeah, if you want to be an international trainer, uh, the whole world has been covered by this book every if you're going to China to train, you're going to Japan to train, you're going to uh, Singapore, where you're going to, you could go and read the section and see exactly what you need to do so that that training is impactful. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and I hope to see you next month. So next month, um, next month for sure, we'll be able to have uh, one or even two people that are going to be a panel, panel and our guests to talk about a certain topic. So. If you don't mind, click on the link to say that you want to receive notifications for all our webinars, and you get an email from us uh, when the next webinar is. So the next webinar is actually going to be every third Thursday of the month, so it's already known. Third Thursday of every single month at 2 p.m. Nigerian time, or let's say 1 p.m. GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. You can calculate that for whatever destinations you are. And please join us and uh, join us for the next one. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.